Coach Hayward. Hey, a lot of yeah. <laughs> this uh, receiving core, it seems like they've got a lot of guys that can run routes pretty well and make big plays. I don't know, let's see, what kind of stands out with those guys? I mean, Hod Hodgins is good, Hernandez, Bradford. I mean, they're all, they're good receivers. Hodgins has size, Hernandez is quick, so it's Bradford. So they're solid, you know. They've been, they've been doing a good job passing the ball. They're passing a lot. Are you expecting the Peterson protege tree line of multiple formations and trick plays and all that to be just prepared for kind of everything? Yeah, there's, there's, they saw some, uh, some of the similarities and stuff like that. So, um, you know, with, with Coach Jonathan Smith coming, you know, from Washington and, and being with Coach Peterson, and uh, they showed some stuff on film that's very similar. What's the adjustment to the Friday game for you guys coaching? Nothing. Got to go. You just got to go. Wise though, I mean, you got to move things up, move things around. Schedule-wise, I mean, both teams lost a, lost a day, you know, as far as preparation, but, you know, you got to prepare with the time that you have. So that's what we did. We didn't, didn't put too much thought, just what we, what we got to do best to win the game. You've been back and coached the alma mater a couple times before, right? I'm sorry? You've been back to the alma mater and coached a couple games before, right? You've been back to... Yeah, you know, when I was at uh, Washington, we went down there, SC, they came to us, uh, and then this has been my first time here at Oregon to go there. So, yes, I've been against them a few times. Yeah. What do you remember about Jonathan like, as a player, and what do you expect? Gotta get one here. Jonathan was always calm, very confident. You know, um, he was a technician, very, very smart. Uh, so I, I, I expect, you know, his team to be ready, you know. I mean, he, he done a great job, you know, because their offense has a ton of production, you know, with the running backs, with Jamar Jefferson and those guys. They've done a really, really good job running the ball and, and the RPOs, the play action pass. And um, that's, that's Jonathan. He's a, he was a good player. I and mean, he's, he's doing a great job, you know, leading that Oregon State. How proud were you to see how Thomas Graham responded to Arizona State last week? Because the previous year they went at him quite a bit and they tried to do it again and he seemed to you know, have a big performance, a lot of deflections. You know, I was really proud of him uh, and, and D'Amador. Both of them did a really good job, you know, given, you know, the, the lumps that they took early in the year and last year. I mean, I was really proud, but, you know, Coach Dante Williams has done a great job, you know, with those guys at the corner position and just preparing them. And it's, it's, it's encouraging to see the development week to week, you know, to this point. So we just got to keep that going. You anticipate jokes and foul will be able to go? You know, we'll, we'll, we'll see that. You know, that's so coach will address that later. And then Cumberland is a guy that came in and got an opportunity there last week and, and maybe showed some of the depth you guys got there at a that stock. Absolutely. Was happy for him coming in and getting a sack. I think he recovered a fumble. But, last yeah, you know, so that, that's great for him. And, you know, we got to get guys on the field and, and you know, proud of him. And Matrell, like, you know, Matrell hadn't been playing a whole lot. And he came in there and dime, made a great tackle on third down. So everybody got to play. Which, uh, which was the more fun to award be a part of the 98 when you guys won in double overtime or the 2000 when was the top 10 teams? Man, those are tough. I mean, I think all of them are special, you know, and, and are memorable for different reasons. Obviously, in uh, 98 when we played in that game, um, that was that was big, you know, double overtime. Kenny Simonson running around the corner and then in 2000, Jay Cookis, who's a special teams coordinator, you know, with three picks versus Joey. Um, all of those, those were good games. Uh, how, how, like, when, when you move into like the coaching ranks, like, how long does it take, kind of, for like those allegiances to adjust? I mean, obviously, you know, that you talked about this a little bit last year, like, you're with Oregon now and everything, but like that first time you went back with me, like Washington, or played them, like, what, just kind of, what was that like? like I, I'll admit, the first time um, when they came up to uh, Seattle when I was at Washington, that was a little different. Um, but ever since then, I mean, you know, I'm in the moment. Coaching and on the game plan, you know, for our team to do the best and for, to, for us to win. So um, I don't really think about it. You know, I prepare my guys right now to make sure we go in Fort Ballas. We got a great challenge on the road, and you know, the record is out. It doesn't matter. This is an emotional game. You know, houses are divided. This is a civil war. You're, you're one of the few coaches on the staff that actually has kind of ties to this right Memorials from Florida and all that sort of thing. Do you, do you actually kind of? Uh, preach any sort of like extra importance to this game or does this one mean more to you or you know all the games are important um you know do do kind of you know tell the guys you know some of the new guys that you know like i said that this is this is this is the civil war you know in this state there's the houses that are divided you know and i was and i was with oregon state my wife ran track here you know and uh, i wasn't coaching here it was it was kind of funny because she would wear her stuff around the house talking about we got to win you know the, the civil war and all that stuff but um 
you know, it's it's an emotional game. You know, you know, whoever wins the game, you know, we got 365 days of bragging rights. We want to keep that on our side. <laughs> What's it like for you and your teammates at Flat Oregon State this week? Are they are they giving you flack at all for no crossing? No. I, I reached out to Everson Bernard, you know, just because, you know, he and I, you know, keep it professional right. and, and he'll talk. But other than that, I haven't heard from anybody. I haven't reached out to anyone else. Right. I'm going to go about my business. We're going to do the same. Coach, teams have been able to put pressure on the Oregon State quarterback this year. Is there anything you can do this Friday to, to exploit that? Um, you know, Coach Levitt's going to call the calls, and everybody has to make sure that they execute those calls. So whether that is we, we bring in pressure, you know, or, or we sitting back and even we got a three-man rush, we got to win one-on-one. -on -one. So, you know, you just got to do the job, whatever that is. You know, whatever defense we're playing and whatever offense, you know, that they're running. Keep the red zone numbers are really pretty incredible. The, the, once you guys get down there, how much you do buckle down? How much pride do you guys take, especially in the secondary, to really not allow very many touchdowns and such? Yeah, you know, I think that's it's huge because uh, whether teams have gotten down there on their own and, and whether, you know, there's been a turnover or a bigger turn or something uh, that, that put us in a situation defensively, we've been showing great resilience as far as keeping guys out and holding the field goals. Um, we encouraged a sudden change. You know, others just said we've been talking about sudden change. We got to go out there and we got to get a stop. I mean, I think that is pretty impressive, but, you know, we still got one more game to go in the regular season that they're still showing proof about. The two cornerbacks, Yamador and, and uh, Thomas, uh, they played the best combo game, in my opinion, of their careers on this last game. What was the difference? Why, how, how were they able to shut down Nikhil Harry in that Arizona State run, uh, passing attack? I mean, we just really challenged them. I mean, you know, I know Coach Williams showed them the film last year yeah. of, of Nikhil, you know, going against Thomas. Uh, and then just other routes, and then we, we kind of stressed to them the whole week, you know, like that this is a really good receiving core. It's just not Nikhil out there. Mm -hmm. You know, they had other good threats, you know, and um, quarterback was really good. I mean, and Eno Benjamin was a very good runner. Um, same way going into this week, you know, this team is, is, is dangerous. Oregon yeah. State is dangerous. They put on put up points. They move the ball versus opponents. So we got to go out there and play great defense. So we're going to stress the same thing. But, I mean, I, 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 I pat Thomas and Diamador on the back, but not too much. We still got business to handle. Right. So. What's your favorite Thanksgiving dish? Yeah, you know, I, I love them all. You know, um, I'd have to say favorite one, I might have to go with the pumpkin pie and a glass of milk. <laughs> you know, I can't turn anything down in my house. My wife would get mad at me. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thanks,